So hopefully you've all been taking lots of notes. I have. We can get into the question part. Yeah, I, I just want to make, before you go off that front, mm. um, one thing that's important is what Fran's talking about is how, you know, you might get a reflection here, there, move the mic a little bit. Um, understanding how these things work in real life. I can't tell you how many clients have been looking over my shoulder and they're going like, what's that two and a half dB at 400 hertz? And it's like, well, it's actually really not there. Well, what do you mean it's not there? I'm, I'm looking at it. It's like, I can make it go away. Would you like, you know, I'm looking at it because I want to see what it is. But if you have experience, you can make these graphs look kind of how you want. <laughs> Just by, you know, I mean, if, if, you're, if you're after that. Um, but it's important to realize, like, you're looking at this frequency response and in the impulse response, the waterfall. Like Fran said, if he moves that thing, the, the top end will change, but you're in the ball game, right? Mm -hmm. You're in the ball game of that, and you can just change the resolution. This thing will also do a fa show you phase, won't it? Yeah, it will. Want to show us? Uh, sure, Chris, I'd love to show you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of interesting. See what happened there? Just as he moved in the impulse response, the frequency response. Yeah, well, it's, it's going to show me kind of instantaneous. It's showing me the frequency response of whatever window I'm allowing it to look at. Now, that's very cool. You can see. But it's wow. a slice of the waterfall. Exactly. That's what you're looking at is a slice of the waterfall. Now, that's pretty useful stuff to tell you what's happening Except in the, the room, too. Numbers. Except what? Numbers along the bottom. As in, like, as you're pulling that to the right, it shows yeah. a, a smaller and smaller. We're thing. going through time, though, so yep. yeah. those numbers thing, don't change. Yeah, the thing on the bottom is the decay time of the energy broadband, and it's showing you what's happening in the frequency oh, there great. as we as we go up. So now, please understand that this isn't valid below 100 hertz here, because I've got such a small window that I'm looking at. I don't have any valid information below 100 hertz. That's why i got to open the window up to start mm -hmm. to get valid information at low frequencies. All this information we're looking at here was generated from, what, like a sustained pink noise burst? Or? No, it's a sweep. That one's a sweep. From that. Okay. <laughs> I was going to do it with my mouth, but that was cooler. <laughs> and you can see the if low frequency. the mic frequency. was plugged in, we can now look at what that. I, I just did another measurement right there. So my head's in front of the speaker. That can't be good. There's at least a couple of other things between me and the, and the microphone. Um, but that's the test I just did. Uh, you wanted to see phase, view. Yeah. So how does the length of the sweep affect it? Typically, the length of the sweep, the longer the sweep, the more low frequency information and resolution I'm going to get. That's typical answer to any energy time measurement. Um, my empirical tests on this show that there isn't that whole a lot of difference. I don't know. I don't know what kind of transform they're using to make the convert the impulse. They're, they're doing some kind of fast Fourier transform, but whatever they're doing, I know on the TEF. We do much longer sweeps to measure the low frequency part. When we do when we do the TEF frequency measurements, we do two tests. You can see a low frequency test very clearly here, and you can see a high frequency test. This low frequency test was 15 <coughs> second sweep. This was a four second sweep or a five second sweep. So we do. If you didn't have that longer sweep on the low frequency, our, we'd have no resolution. We'd have 50 hertz resolution. You know, so we just see like this. So I had to get, to get down to 5 hertz resolution, I had to open up the time window and do a much longer sweep to get resolution like that. On, on, I don't have a good answer for you why it doesn't seem to make a difference, a big difference, on a fuzz measure. Do you have any theories, Lars? Uh, not really. Because, I mean, this kind of resolution that we're seeing down here, it's not stated anywhere what the resolution is. It doesn't tell us. But again, you know, we know that, you know, we don't have, you know, that level of 15 hertz no, in this room. No, that's Nothing so, there, you know, so. there is a lot of noise that comes into the measurement, yeah. and the longer sweep also will, will help you make sure that it's listening to this tone for a long time, and random noise won't be that important in inter interfering with the measurement at that point. I mean, here's, I'll, I'll overlay, my head's in a different place, I'm sure, but I'll overlay a long sweep. You, you can talk during this stuff theoretically, too, because, I don't know, this doesn't have a sweat filter, does it? <laughs> <laughs> so that was a 10 second sweep versus a one second sweep a minute ago. Let's see what kind of difference they make. And that should be both of them. <laughs> so that's yeah. the difference. Very Between 100 hertz, uh, there's a little bit, and uh, like Fran said, they said was a di in a different place. Yeah. So we see a little bit of difference. You would like to think K. we had better resolution down there below 100 hertz, but uh, I don't know. It's looking close. It's pretty darn close. I think your phase is either in view or in window maybe let's see here. Yeah. look at the frequency, the frequency. Yeah. 
Was it in frequency? Display type. <laughs> Try that. There you go. Yeah, I'm not buying that. I'm not, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, no, this time's 100K. Good. Yes, I am buying that, actually. If that's, yeah. that's 100,000 100, degrees of phase. Yeah. I'll go back to that again. Uh, on display type. Display type up to the top. Yeah, I know. I think I tried Look at it. It's something else, Ben. There's there you go. Yeah, the minimum phase is... That's uh, what you want it to be. Look at group delay. That's, a, that's also yeah. really important information. You know, when you see these phase responses that are flipped 360 degrees and you get a little freaked out, the group delay is really important to, to realize how, how much discrepancy there is in the time arrival and how it's affecting. So that's pretty good response. Yeah, none right of this now. information down here below 20 hertz means anything. So you can forget about that. I don't even know if it really means a lot below 40 hertz, but... Uh, Probably not. Now, the, the one that you took, the blue one is the first one or the second one? The blue one's the long one. The long one, yeah. And the group delay also relates to what type of speaker it is. If it is a closed cabinet, or if it's a bass reflex, <laughs> or if it is a passive radiator. Um, the sharper the roll-off, on any filter, the more group delay you will have. So, you know, there are several things that will affect this, but it is an interesting view. 